Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Well, blessed resurrection day. He is risen. <clears throat> what a wonderful day. It's uh, just going to be a joyous day, I know, for you and your families. And uh, it's going to be, a, it has been already a joyous day here at Fairview. We had just a wonderful celebration at our uh, 830 service. And we're worshiping now. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we'll uh, begin our service. We'll be baptizing five today. And um, two come for uh, baptism that, that know the Lord, but, uh, you know, they are baptized very young, and now they come just recognizing that Jesus is Lord. And three others come for being baptized in the Lord's name by immersion for the first time. And I'm excited about that. And those, uh, two of those three have very large connections with this group and this service. So if you really want to get... Uh, the resurrection power going through your spirit. Stay a little bit beginning at 11 o'clock service and uh, observe that baptism. What a what a great day to have baptism. What a great symbol of what the resurrection of Christ is all about. And that's what I really want just to share with you and me and all of us again. Today, Millions and millions of believers will be gathering for worship to praise Jesus and to recognize that he is alive. And I imagine it's in the billions that have believed him for 2,000 years. And we are all celebrating with that. But the, the message that Rosemary just read to you from Scripture, from John, i like for us to go back and just relive that narrative, to relive that moment and what it means and 
and how we've come to this point today, we need to remind ourselves about the resurrection story. We need to know. So for many of us today, it's a familiar story, but it's one we need to, to relive over and over. There may be some here today that the story is out there, you know about it, but you haven't received it deep into your heart. You haven't truly believed it. And you need to listen to the story in that way. Do I need to make a decision today to publicly say Jesus is Lord, Jesus is risen, and to follow him at another time in baptism? Be thinking and praying about that. As we're going to be in, in John chapter 20, that exact part of scripture that Rosemary read to us today. And that narrative begins in the 20th chapter. It says, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdal Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. I thought about that a lot this week, and, and I thought a lot about well, how that Easter story begins, that it's while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. It was still before dawn, obviously. The, the scientific explanation for that is that uh, the earth hadn't quite rotated all the way around that morning, right? And uh, they hadn't seen the sun. But the meaning of those little words, that little phrase, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, is so much deeper. It says so much more to the power of the resurrection and why the resurrection is so important in our life today and why we sit here. It was dark when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Her, her life at that moment was dark, wasn't it? Her move that morning, that morning was dark, wasn't it? She had just spent uh, three days grieving the death of her teacher, her rabbi, grieving the death of the one that uh, she had washed the feet of with her tears, grieving the one that had maybe, uh, and for the first time in her life, had forgiven her, who had seen her not just as an object as other people saw her, but saw her, you know, as a woman, as a, as a person created in God's image and had loved her. And this was a deep, deep time of grief for her and for the other followers of Jesus during that day, and especially for those disciples who at this point had scattered to their homes, maybe a few of them huddled in that darkness, wondering what to do next with the death of their teacher, their Lord, the one they had put so much of their lives in for the last three years. It was a dark morning. But it was still dark. Um, we said, let's look at it scientifically, but think of the darkness cosmically. Think of the, the darkness on the span of eternity, the eternity line. It was still dark in the world's history. It was still dark in that we men and women had marred uh, God's beautiful creation. You know, God made this world. He created this world. And the Bible says God is light, not darkness. And God called this world into being, didn't he? God, when he, when he created everything, God said, this is good. This is perfect. This is a beautiful world. And, and how many of us who, who hasn't traveled or have even been to the beach or the mountains or maybe you've had the, the good fortune of seeing some of the grandest places in this, on this globe and in this country and in this world. And it doesn't take much to see the beauty, the perfectness of the created world that God made. God made it perfect. God made it beautiful. God made it a paradise. God made it light. And God made it for us. But we know 
the cosmic story. We know the eternal story. We know the message that's throughout all of Scripture. Uh, it wasn't God that messed it up. <laughs> it wasn't God. Many of us want to blame God, don't we? Gosh, how do you believe? I've heard all. How do you believe in a God that causes all this suffering in the world? How do you believe in God that has messed up my life? How do you believe in God that allowed this person or that person to die and this person didn't or this person to get sick and this person didn't? It wasn't God who messed that up, was it? It was us. We marred the beautiful creation. We rebelled against our creator, the God of light, the God of love, the God of compassion, the God of salvation. We did it. Let's don't put that blame on God. And God, on the other hand, is not up there like some of us think and just raining down these bad things on us and a few of us. God, ever since we even begin to mess it up, God's been on a rescue mission ever since then, hasn't he? God's been on a rescue mission to save us, to redeem us, to redeem us from ourselves, to redeem us from what caused that darkness on that morning where Mary headed to the tomb to redeem us from the sin that we caused on ourselves. So when the scripture says early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, that has some significance, doesn't it? It's dark. It's dark. Maybe that has some significance for you where you are in life right now. We always don't go through the journey of life and we feel like it's all light, that it's all great, that everything is just going just as we expected and just as we want it. We have some dark moments too, don't we? Maybe it's something personal. Maybe it's a personal illness. Maybe it's an issue that you struggle with. Um, Maybe it's something you're trying to understand. Maybe it's family that's really causing some pressure and stress upon your life or, or finances or work or, or uh, anything else. You can name it. You can name it. But sometimes early in the morning while it's still dark, you can have some darkness too. Your soul can feel dark. You need something to come in and bring light and bring hope, and bring grace, and bring love. And that's where Mary was early that morning. Even when she goes and she shares with the beloved disciple, who we know is John, or at least that's who I know he is, and Peter, it's dark for them too. And, and they run to the tomb, and, and John is younger and faster, you know, and, and he, gets, he gets there first. Doug, I think you could beat me in a race to the tomb. You're younger and faster than I am. So, you know, it was just a thing of age, you know. And, um, he's, and he looks in and, and uh, he sees, and you know, the significance of the scripture here, too, it's not like we say, well, gee, you know, Lazarus came back from the dead. Well, Jesus called Lazarus forth. And John looks in and Peter looks in and they see something very different. They see the linen strips already torn off the body and lying there neatly. They see the napkin that covered Jesus' head folded, lying there in the empty tomb, already gone. Lazarus comes forth from the tomb, and the scripture says he's still bound. The strips are still there, and Jesus is the one that says, take those strips off of him. Jesus is already gone. He's already not there. But still, it's, it, it's dark, it's murky, and the scripture says there is that John and Peter and Mary still don't understand exactly what's happening. So they still have that darkness in their heart. They, they still have that foreboding in their life. And then the two disciples go back home, and Mary remains. Thank goodness for the women who stuck it out. <laughs> you know? Thank goodness for the women that, that didn't give up on who Jesus was in this story. And she stays there in the garden. And she's not going anywhere until she finds out what happened to her Lord. 
and through the mist and, and through the, the light barely coming up with the sunrise, she sees a figure who she supposes is the gardener. She says, where have, where have you taken it? Do you know who took my Lord away? Do you know who took the body? Just let me know so I can go and, and, and take care of it because I love him. And then the story eternally and personally begins to change, doesn't it? The gardener, who's really Jesus, just says that one word, doesn't he? Mary. Mary. And Mary instantly knows it's Jesus. And the sun, I could almost see the sun rising fully at that exact moment. And the sun shines on not even, not a dead human being, but now a risen Lord. And Mary hears her name, and she turns toward Jesus and cries out, Rabboni, which means teacher. And the veil has began to lift. And Mary, being the first evangelist of Scripture, goes to the disciples with the news. I see the Lord. Not Jesus. I didn't find the body, but I've seen the Lord, the living Lord. And she told them that, that he had said all the things he said to her. In the midst of our darkness, in the in the midst of whatever's going on in life for you right now, if it's darkness, if it's shame, if it's sin, if it's not knowing, if it's too much pressure, listen for Jesus to call your name. He still calls your name. He's still an individual Savior. He didn't rise and go to a great mountaintop or hover in the sky and said, listen, everybody, I'm alive. He came and he comes to us one-on-one. -on -one. Personally, and he calls our name and he says come out of your darkness come to the light believe in life death is conquered sin is conquered come and live and so despair turns to joy that's what I see in that part of the story the resurrection brings joy it's why we're here it's why the cross looks so beautiful it's, it's why we left so somber Thursday night with the lights dimming in that service. And why we come back today and we're full of life and, and we're full of light. And then that joy has to turn into something that we understand. And, and can you imagine then the next part of the story that, that Rosemary read is that later that evening, then finally Jesus appears to his believers, his followers, those disciples minus Thomas and Judas. And he comes into the room where they're at. And what is the first words that the resurrected Lord says to them? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's why Jesus was resurrected, isn't it? That's why we have life. That's that's what begins to make sense to us all. Isn't that what we really want? <clears throat> Can you remember when you were separated from God and didn't know Jesus? Or maybe even as a believer sometimes, we just seek for peace. We want peace in our life. We want peace in our spirit. We want peace in our soul. We want peace from this confusion, this murkiness, this stuff that's going on. And what's the meaning of the resurrection? What's the meaning of salvation? It's when we, hostile to God, come back to a loving God through Jesus Christ and Jesus' first words to our soul is peace be with you. That's the meaning of the resurrection. That's the power. If only he can bring that kind of peace, can he? I thought of it. He could have said anything first to those disciples, right? Here I am. <laughs> I told you so. Surprise. <laughs> this is what it was all about. Now do you get it? You know, all right, get out there and get back to work. 
Now, peace be with you. He knew he needed to settle those souls, to settle those spirits, to give them something they'd never had before and that we never have before without Jesus. He says the same thing in the Gospel of Luke. If you read the resurrection story there, he says it again, I believe, in the beginning of Acts. Then he says, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit and we have peace, we can do nothing else but, but share the good news with others. And then I really, as I kept reading that chapter, as that chapter ends, it's part that Rosemary didn't read, but I'd, for, I'd, gone, I'd forgotten that the chapter ends this way. It, it ends with the purpose of this whole story this whole life of the Son of God, Jesus. The reason why this entire gospel, this entire good news was written, the reason that it all led up to this resurrection moment. In verse 30 it begins, John says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's the why of the story, isn't it? That's the why of Jesus' coming. That's the why of Jesus is Lord. That's the why that he had to pay the terrible penalty of the death of the cross. And that's the why of the resurrection that Jesus lives again. All of this is written. All of this has been preserved by the Holy Spirit. All of this has remained for over 2,000 years. What's one of the cases for Easter is do you think if they made all this up that it lasted more than just a few years? It's lasted for over 2,000 years. It's real. And the the reason is that God wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He wants you to believe that he sent him on a rescue mission for you. He wants you to believe that he raised him from the dead. He wants you to believe that sin is conquered and darkness doesn't have to be. He wants you to believe that he raised him, Jesus, to the glory that we all bow down and worship today and he wants you to believe that you can be raised a new life like those being baptized will symbolize today this is written so that you may have life in his name so maybe today and maybe where you are in life maybe it's just these moments maybe you got to go back to some stuff on Monday but I want you to know Jesus goes with you. But today, right now, rejoice. Today, right now, remember in the company of other believers that Jesus lives. And it's worth our joy. It's worth our worship. And light has penetrated the darkness that we have caused. And he is alive. Jesus lives. And that makes all of the difference. I want to have a prayer in just a minute. We're going to, we're going to sing a, a closing song of praise to our Lord because he lives. And, but I just want to invite you that maybe you're one here who's heard this story time and time again. Or maybe it's the first time in this way. And, and as we sing, I, again, I want to give you a chance to come up and say, now is the time I need to let everybody know Jesus is Lord. Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus has died for my sins. I want to follow him in baptism as he commanded me to. I want to give you that opportunity. What a great invitation from the God of the universe to you because he is alive. 
any other decision or anything you need to pray with me about for a moment. I'll be up here for a while. And um, for those that already have made this decision and you're just finishing worship today, just uh, worship and sing this last great hymn and song to Jesus and what he's done for you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are risen, your Lord. God, you, um, you did this for us. Lord, may we just give this time of worship to you. And, and Lord, if there's a heart here that needs a nudge to come and recognize you before us as the Lord of their life, may they do so. And may they follow you with baptism one day. But Lord, um, we leave those things in your hands. We come to praise you now. Thank you for this Resurrection Sunday that brings light to our darkness. In Jesus' name, amen.